Welcome to the Geniverse. Cue music. Come and join us for Jenna. We're gonna go to the Geniverse. Come and join us for Jenna. We're gonna go to the Geniverse. Yes, welcome to the Geniverse. This is a podcast you can see with your eyes. And smell with your heart. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's strange that we have a podcast because we don't participate. We're notorious podcast haters. I don't listen to them unless they're about evil things. And even then, it's only once every three years. And I don't think they should exist. <laughs> but here we are making one. <laughs> the two most qualified people on the planet Earth to be doing so. It's because um, we're huge hypocrites. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I want to re- remind everybody that you can change your mind at any moment in any direction as extreme as you want. Exactly. That's why sometimes people get divorces. Yeah. Nothing is forever. And that's why sometimes people get married. Well, I guess we should give a little self-intro and like... Yeah, because what is the Geniverse? Yeah, what is the Geniverse? I'm Jill. <laughs> and I'm Enna. And together, we're, we're Jenna. Jenna. So, why are we here? Um, we have advice to offer. Mm-hmm. We have opinions to offer. And we generally just like to run our mouths. Exactly. Also, I like to think we're two very entertaining people. Sure. Some people might think that. And the people who don't, don't matter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, just like a quick self-intro for both of us. Um, I'm Anna. I'm originally from Ghana, West Africa, and I grew up in Delaware. <laughs> um, Maybe a fact about Delaware? Do you think I know a fact about Delaware? You do! <laughs> um, like, it, one of the most evil companies like ever existed and one of the most evil <laughs> families who own that company um are like based in delaware like the dupont um chemical uh corporation i thought you were gonna say there's no sales tax oh okay <laughs> all right well i guess there is no sales tax and it's small and evil delaware and evil. is a corporate tax haven um <laughs> slay and delaware is real um, it's real it's real so yeah, that's that's enough about me. Okay, I'll do the same amount about me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm Jill, and I'm from Ohio, born and raised from Alliance, Ohio. If you haven't heard of it, I mean, maybe look it up. It's kind of the best city on earth. City. <laughs> Town. We have a downtown. We have two streets, not one. State Street and Main Street. So. That's almost a city. You're really stretching the definition of city. And it has been city. there. <laughs> and she can't deny that she enjoyed it. I mean, like, I had a good time, but, like, I feel like intrinsically I am a good time. Like, put me anywhere <laughs> and I'm enjoying myself. I can't argue with that. But <laughs> it wasn't hard to have a good time. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Uh, it, there were some pretty cool parts, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. It My was dad lives like, there. Yeah. So, yeah, that's... Oh, a fact. fact I'm yeah, give fa- fact about Ohio. <clears throat> Ohio's... Um, state drink is tomato juice. <laughs> I was present in the fourth grade when they taught us about the states. Mm. Mm. I've seen Anna try to order tomato juice at a movie theater. <laughs> Deny that. I Okay, I can't beat the tomato juice enjoyer allegation. I think a lot more people would like tomato juice if they would just like open their eyes and, you know, like, be open-minded. Like, I was open-minded once on a plane, and then I had tomato juice for the first time, (laughs) and I was like, wow, this this is low-key like a banger, you know, so. Savory drink. But I think it's very fitting that Ohio State drink is tomato juice. You want to know Delaware's? What? Milk. Really? (laughs) (laughs) Any percentage? The, they don't specify the percent, but I like to think Delaware is the skim milk of America. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ohio's the tomato juice of America, and Delaware is the skim milk. Which is a good pairing. Yeah. We have here We're tomato both, juice and skim, skim milk. milk. We're both from like two very like hated on states. I feel like Delaware is like the butt of a lot of people's like, oh, it exists joke. Yeah. And Ohio is just like the butt of a joke. A joke yeah. in general. Oh, which one of us is single and which one of us is not? I'm single. Wait, why are you asking like, you know, we're both single. 
Oh, I don't know. Like, oh. I feel like we should intro ourselves. I have a like... husband. His name. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I have <laughs> two husbands, one in Delaware and one in Ohio. We're both single. We're both I don't know single. why, but it feels like important to, to contextualize that. Yeah, our life. Yeah, our life. I have a cat. Mm-hmm. What else? What else do people need to know? We about both people? have siblings. We both have siblings. Slay. Wow. I like hobbies. Do we? We have. Do we have shared hobbies? I feel like we don't have a lot of shared hobbies. Now that I think about we it. We like to walk. Oh yeah, we like to walk. <laughs> That's all they need. To when, whenever it's like you, have, you ask your friend for their hobbies, you're like, damn, what is holding this friendship together? <laughs> damn. Yeah, we like to talk and we like. We to like walk. to talk and we like to walk. Yeah, I think that's enough. That's, that's good enough. enough. Yeah. yeah you yeah. fill in the holes of my knowledge. You know, I don't know much about the things you know about. True. Yeah. yeah. We bring a lot. We're bringing different set of skills and knowledge yes, to the table. Exactly. I guess that's pretty much our intro for this first episode. We yeah. Hope, we hope you enjoy your visit to the Jenniverse. Okay, so following the segments that we call the intro, <laughs> what? what? Sure, yeah. We'll, I mean, we'll show them the nuts and bolts. Of yeah, it. we'll show them the nuts and bolts. I mean, structure. we wrote it down. We wrote it down. If you That's what see we keep it, looking zoom at. In. <laughs> so yeah, following the intro, we're gonna jump right into a segment we like to call the lately, which is our news. Yeah, our version of the news, or you know, we just talk about things that have been happening lately. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's about the world and sometimes it'll be about us. Yeah, micro, macro. Micro, macro. We'll start with the macro mm -hmm. and then we'll get into mac micro if, and if any. Um, so macro, something that's been happening lately, um, especially when we're filming this right now, is the, the, the big snowstorm <laughs> that hit America. Naturally, I want to talk about this. Well, we were talking about topics. <laughs> With added out, she's like, well, I have to talk about the <laughs> snowstorm. Snow so I'm so excited well, to see what you're going to say. I just, I've... I've been on TikTok, like, I spend way too much time on TikTok. Like, my screen time is 25 hours a day. Um, <laughs> you can imagine. But I think that um, a lot of the things that I've been seeing have really gotten me, like, thinking about, like, this storm really is, like, once in a generation. What I don't know. Happened? It's okay. So it just snowed. No, it's so much <laughs> bigger than just it snowed. Like this massive, like gust of air, like came down from the uh, Arctic. I almost said Antarctic, but I have to remind myself that the Arctic is north and the Antarctic is that. south. Antarctic is where the penguins are. Arctic is where the um, polar bears? polar bears are. Yes. Wow. Okay. Anyways, uh, so <laughs> this massive gust of air like coming down from the arctic and it hit so many states in the united states i mean it really made us a united states and canada but like whatever they should be used to snow so i'm not going to mention oh yeah they this. shouldn't be complaining but in any case it like hit and like it hit places like the northwest corridor it really <laughs> badly hit the rockies the midwest <laughs> and um it went on to like hit certain states in the like northeast corridor like new york upstate new york it hit places differently you know like in places like um seattle it's not like they got like full out like but snow. They, I, where were they were like they were sliding that that was seattle like, yeah. yeah so they got a lot of like icy rain so like that froze over and created like the perfect conditions to watch people sliding around like penguins and it was truly remarkable people were on their hands and knees trying to make it down the sidewalk i saw and, the videos but why do you care so deeply well i care so deeply because like it, <laughs> is this in out of one a climate day. change interest that you're very interested in this partially yes but also because like i'm not gonna lie i am like a disaster head okay you know like okay. when when That's when, the piece when I news oh you're like what's the personal thing yeah okay. what's the yeah personal i'm low key thing? a little bit of a disaster i babysat a child that loved natural disasters so we <laughs> well i don't love it, them oh well. well you know what i mean in a child <laughs> it, way yeah, way in a child, a yeah fascinates. Yeah, yeah it fascinates, fascinates. Me. Yeah. um and there were about five thousand plus canceled flights this holiday season I know that because we calculated that's half a million people that their shit got rocked. Yeah. No Christmas. No Christmas. For the Grinches out there. The Grinches Best out there. Christmas Best Christmas ever. In a while. Everyone's having a <laughs> yeah. bad time. In and the airport, sleeping at the airport on Christmas. All those videos. Some people had meltdowns. All the presents unopened under the tree. Oh. Wow. Wow. 
so unfortunate. <sighs> okay. It sucks. And then um, I just like really found it to be like wild. Oh, one of the worst things that came out of it is like there is like currently a death toll of about 48 people. I don't remember the number From exactly. From the weather? From the weather. And I think 24 of them at least were in like Buffalo. Buffalo got hit really badly. With ice? With, with like snow. Buffalo got like three feet of snow. Power outages? Power outages and people like are freezing to death because it oh, got wow. really cold up there. Um, so it's really, really unfortunate. That's why yeah. it's like also like I was like this shit must be talked about. But yeah. Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was, it was huge. Okay, the weather. What else? Um, I think you should. Okay, you should throw okay. One in there, we should. We should balance. I guess it the off. preface. I like to talk about celebrity news. Yes, of course. That's kind of like my sports. You know, it doesn't matter, but it does. <laughs> so, I was thinking, like, what's the biggest thing happening in celebrity news right now? I think the number one thing, Nepo babies, which I don't think I've ever said that out loud until right now. That word is so Nepo. Ugly. Nepotism. I, I just like to say the full nepotism. Yeah, that sounds evil. Right? Yeah. That sounds like you're accusing someone. Exactly. That's something you whisper. Exactly. Being like, I'm a Nepo baby. That's yeah. That's like a that's little cute. cute. But nepotism is like sinister. Ne it's a nepotism. It's a nepotism child. <laughs> <laughs> Spawn. <laughs> but. So, the article comes out, but even before the article, every celebrity is talking about it. My personal favorite Nepo baby is Lily Rose Depp because she is shameless about it. She will not be stopped. She doesn't care Johnny Depp is her dad, right? Yeah. And then her mom is some model, and she's walking in Chanel shows, but I think she's 5'5", five five, and that's what it says on the internet. So, she's probably 5'3". So, but sometimes, somehow for her, nepotism doesn't exist. I wrote down a quote because I just, one day I just dove in reading every dumb shit she's ever said about nepotism. And it's amazing. Like, you know, you kind of have to respect that level of um, determination. So here's a quote from Lily Rose Depp. If somebody's mom or dad is a doctor and then the kid becomes a doctor, you're not going to be like, well, you're only a doctor because your parents are doctor. And she said that in reference to um, how she is an actress, I guess, apparently. And her dad is an actress. And she must have taken, you know, a series of tests, according to this analogy. So Lily Rose Depp is an interesting <laughs> This being. is a real, like, apples and oranges situation, in my opinion. Absolutely. Like, but how do you feel about the whole situation? I, I can see it from both sides. You know, like on one hand, I think it's important for people to disclose the connections, especially familial connections that they had, the unearned, by the way, because you don't earn your familial connections. Like if you have a friend yeah. in the industry, that's a friend you work towards those connections. But a familial is like, it's good for people to disclose those unearned connections that they have in the industry by their family and factor that into humbling themselves when they talk about their achievements. Because I think one of the biggest things that people hate about nepotism babies is that they pretend that their parents or relative being famous really had no factor in them getting to where they are. And I think that that's really what people want from nepotism babies is that like when they talk about the things that they do, I think a lot of them just sort of talk about it as if they just worked hard and got there versus like, no, you didn't. You're, you had an in that you didn't earn in the industry. Um, on the other hand, I completely understand the Nepo baby's point of view because it's like, yeah. I can't help who my parents are. Exactly. And they exposed me to these things. So naturally, I wanted to do this thing that I was exposed to. Like, they're sort of like making the best out of the situation that they were handed. And I think to, a lot of people really deride them for something that it's like, you really can't help who your parents are. Like, I can't help that Henry and Augustina <laughs> gave me like poor money management skills. <laughs> But here I am, yeah. and I have to and overcome you're doing it, the best. and I'm doing my best. And I can acknowledge that as I go, like, I'm bad with money because my parents are bad with money. But also, ultimately, it's my responsibility to keep going and keep bettering myself. So I think as a Nepo baby, it's your responsibility to, like, sort of carve something of yourself that is detached from your parents. Absolutely. And maybe it doesn't help that you go into the same career as your parent. Like, maybe if your parent is an actor... Consider modeling. I mean, like, if your parents in entertainment, like, go do something, maybe. Consider doing or something that's not. behind the scenes. Yeah, behind the scenes or not in entertainment directly. Yeah. That way, like, you can really say that you carved your way and can feel proud in that. But I think, like, 
people like nepotism babies need to understand why people are upset and not be so defensive about it but also people need to like relax because people can't help who their parents are that's how i feel like nepotism is going to be unavoidable at some point mm -hmm. because you grow up around something you see it that's like you know, when I was a little kid, I thought I wanted to be a teacher because all I ever did was go to school. I couldn't even imagine <laughs> another job. I don't want to be a teacher, but that's the only example I had. So I understand why nepotism happens, but you have to understand, like, it was easier for you. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, that's all don't get online and get all, like, high and mighty and be like, well, you don't understand all the classes I took. Bro, it doesn't matter all the classes. There there's somebody without the familial connection that's doing the same amount of effort that you are. Who doesn't have access, even because it's not even just, like, usually this is my family. It's mm -hmm. usually, like, this is my rich family. Mm -hmm. So you have access to all these people, mm -hmm. all these classes mm -hmm. that maybe someone living in bumfuck isn't going to have access to. Mm -hmm. And you need to just be real with that. Like, that is a part of your story. And that's something you should not be so defensive about. And maybe you take your, you know, access and help people that don't have it. Yeah. I love that topic. Yeah. I'm so slay. <laughs> <laughs> so, now we have some follower submitted questions. Yes, time for 20 of them. 20 questions. And we're going to try to answer your questions with the utmost honesty and the utmost efficiency. All right, question number one. Should I do a PhD? No. no. Absolutely not. Question number two. I'm in a situation ship with a man 10 years older than me. What do I do? I would need to know what 10 years those are, but based on the information I've been given, it's gonna be a no, stop it. Absolutely. Like. You're in a situation ship with a man 10 years older than you. My advice is just call his mom. Yeah. Clearly he's acting childish. However old he is, he needs to get his shit together. 40 to 50, fine. <laughs> Those are two adults. Um, is dating someone online who lives multiple states away a stupid idea? No. If you don't want a boyfriend like that's around all the time, it might be the best idea you've ever had. I don't think it's a good idea. Because I think that, like, what if you fall in love and then, then they're you like... Then could move. Not everyone's ready to leave where they're at. You know, like, I, if I fell in love yes. with someone in Iowa and they didn't want to move to New York, I don't, don't want to move, move to, to Iowa. Iowa. Then it's like, okay, there's a heartbreak. I could have just not met someone from Iowa. True. So, personally, I don't think it's a good idea. It could go either way. But I think there's a place and a time for a, a boyfriend you see four times a year. <laughs> Um, okay, so just found out he's legally married. Oh. Do I still move out or is this no big deal? You're living with him? Where's the wife? Maybe cut, put out a wait, missing person. Hang on. Some people are legally married for like other reasons. Okay. Like, he could be legally married to like someone so that they become a permanent resident of this country. Okay, yeah, I There's didn't think There's a lot about of that. like, That's you know, fine. I think it depends the country. If it's for scammery. If it's for scammery. Stay. Stay. If it's not... If he's fooling around and still talking to the ex-wife emotionally, if they... Well, well they're they still married, so like... Yeah, but that doesn't mean you're in communication. True, true, true. If there's children involved, of course, you'll have to be in communication, but if it's for scammery, But I mean, I still cool think like maybe it. you should like, I don't know, not be in a messy situation. Yeah, definitely don't want to be in the messy situation, but she's already in it. Yeah. She's in the house. She's got to move out. Yeah. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. So if Well, who's paying the who's paying rent? Like if you're splitting rent, I think it's worth it to like move out. Move out. But if, but if he's paying he's the paying rent, rent, think about just it. Just just pretend you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't know won't hurt you. <laughs> um, should I buy 20 pounds of dehydrated hash brown potatoes? If your life is conducive to eating 20 pounds of dehydrated mash Hush, or did, hash browns? I think so. The, the, prepper, yeah, do it. the prepper in me is like... Do it. If you have the space to store it, yeah, do it. It's dehydrated, so I could just go in the pantry. Yeah, okay. that price per ounce has got to be beautiful. Yeah, do it. do it. Okay, um, how do I make dating fun? I think, personally, I think you can make dating fun by going into every date with a little game that you're playing with yourself. <laughs> okay. You I know? think that's lying. Just, I think the game is no, lying. No, it's like a little game. Like, in this game, I'm a sexy <laughs> environmental scientist. Oh, sure. Yeah, you know, it's like, it, you're, you get to have fun, like, 
pretend to be someone else for it. I think the more you do that, the more fun you'll have at dates. Or the game you play with yourself is say as little about yourself as possible. <laughs> yeah, That's something I do a lot on dates. <laughs> Personally, as someone who doesn't date much, I don't know. But I know it's better when you have no expectations. <laughs> like, you can't be like, I'm about to meet my next partner, life, blah, blah, blah. You got to be like, this is a, a meal I'm enjoying with a person I don't know. Slay. <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately, slay. Um, how bad is it to eat weed, then sit in the plane's exit row? Fine as long as we don't crash. Exactly. It's good until you crash and then you did something bad. I think it's bad. As a former flight attendant, like low key, okay, maybe not my life because like, you know, I, you know, I feel like I would be able to get myself out of this situation, <laughs> but like the rest of the passengers' lives yeah. low key, like, you yeah. know, hinges on your ability. So like, if you're going to like be in the exit row, maybe don't, don't eat weed. Because then like when you're in the air too, you feel higher than you are on ground. If you, it's amplified. It's like, it's like, cause the- some of us can handle that. And in reference to that, this cough is a smoker's cough, not about anything else. So don't worry about her, her immunity. But I guess you should not do it. Yeah. That's clear. It's kind but of if bad. you do, I wouldn't be too judgmental about the situation. I am. So this person is asking how to socialize in unfamiliar large groups. I would say I'm not good at it, but asking other people questions questions is easier to do than figuring out what you need to say about yourself i think um one tactic i always find that helps is to isolate the weakest member of the <laughs> Stop. group you're no. the person hurt <laughs> i have been isolated by the i have been the weakest member oh, of the group well you know you just like analyze the group you find the person who's contributing the least to the conversation Me. which is the weakest person in the group and then <laughs> you trap them in conversation by making a comment about what everyone else is talking about if you even if you ask them, oh, so what are what are they saying about X Y Z? They'll answer, and I'm often and then this you person. just engage them in conversation, and that's how you infiltrate your way into the group it's conversation. It works every time. I know it does because it's happened to me. <laughs> okay, so advice for a long distance relationship: um, don't be in one. Yeah, if you're not enjoying it, be in one. If you're in it and you like it, keep going. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to make it different. <laughs> How do I get my expensive sweatpants back from a man who's giving me cold shoulder? Demand them. Call his mom. Get his oh, mom yeah. involved. Like, dear, dear Kathy on Facebook. Dear Kathy, <laughs> hi, my name is... Elizabeth. I had a relationship with your son. With your son. Um, he's currently not responding to me at the way, which is totes cool, but my Juicy Couture... $40 sweatpants. They're not 40 Okay. Juicy Couture $400 oh. sweatpants. I don't know. I don't know the price of Juicy Couture. They're about $100. Okay. Juicy Couture $100 sweatpants are at his place. I need a back. Or if you could Venmo me the money, that would be great. Oh, asking her to Venmo. Yeah. I mean, it would work. It would it work. It would work. Just reach out to his mom. Okay. So, <laughs> help. I forgot someone's name and face, but they remember mine. You're just going to have to never call them by a name anytime you ever see them ever again. Grab the closest person you know. Oh, yeah, and introduce them. And introduce them. them. And don't follow. Just be like, oh. Oh, so have you guys met? And then yeah. they'll start ta- introducing them. It works every time. That's a good idea. <laughs> I forget people's name idea. and face. I just am like, I will never say your name and we will have a relationship. <laughs> Any advice for getting over someone in an amicable breakup? You gotta, I mean, you're gonna have to find a little something you don't like about them. And then you're gonna have to either get really busy or get really busy with someone else. I think you're just gonna have to become toxic and then turn it from amicable to <laughs> a toxic breakup. You gotta up. find a little something yeah. you don't like about them. Exactly. And then just amplify it. And then suddenly <laughs> it'll be a bad breakup. And then, and then it'll you'll be, be over it. Yeah, you'll be over it. Yeah, so just <laughs> Ruin let it turn out. Ruin it. <laughs> Mom opposed to the Respect for Marriage Act. Oh. Should I dis should I disinvite her from my gay wedding? Absolutely. Yeah. Do- I guess yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Why like, would she want to come? 
Does she know it's gay? Ask her if she knows it gay, if, if it's gay and then see if she still wants to go. Yeah, like send her the gayest invitation ever and then check her vibe. Like a tongue kiss. Because, you know, maybe she's like, you know, had some time to think about it and change her mind. But Yeah, give her a chance to yeah, change her mind. Yeah, but make sure the, the invitations are gay as fuck. I mean, like rainbow background. I mean, like. And ask her how she feels about the invitation. If she says something fucked up, maybe yes. say the invitation is not for you anymore. Exactly. But there good needs, luck with that, honestly. Yeah, that's bad. I feel bad for you. Um, transferred twice in undergrad, and now I'm graduating with no close friends. Is this the end? No. Life is long. We, life is we long. met after undergrad. Yeah. Right. We met yeah, in the yeah. real world. You've got, you've got the rest of your life to make a friend, and you yeah. can do it. Just move to, like, a place with people. Yeah. But and not put yourself too big. out there. Maybe not, like, New York City, but maybe Philadelphia. Like, you know, yeah. a, a miss Cute. Like, I guess Philadelphia is a large city, but like, you know, a city that's not too, too large. Not LA. Not LA. Definitely not LA. Definitely not New York. It's hard to make friends in yeah. New York. Um, okay, so my boss doesn't let me bring my dog to work. Should I sue them? <laughs> I think you just quit. I don't think you have grounds for a lawsuit, but I think no. you have grounds for... Won't hold up in court, for Yeah, sure. I would absolutely not hold but up in court. But maybe he quit. Maybe quit and then write a write a like canceling post for the business. On also, I don't Facebook. know if it's totally necessary for every place you work to let you bring your dog. This person could work at a hospital. There, I, I, I think, think you I should think bring your dog. Hospitals could greatly benefit from dogs. Not everybody's dog. <sighs> okay. Yes. Maybe quit. Yeah, maybe quit. I think quitting is the right way out of this one. How long should I wait before asking for a threesome with my situationship and her roommate? Well, you got to read a lot of vibes before you go through with that one. That's quite a, that's not a one, one plus two. This question is almost like three. guaranteeing the. <laughs> Does the roommate even. Know I, you exist? Like, I, I think like it's a situation ship. So like, I guess like the worst that could happen is you ruin it and you get into another situation ship. Yeah. So like. From that perspective, but I also, guess you have nothing to lose. Yeah, but by maybe asking. also like jerk off and rethink about the vibes if everybody <laughs> would be even interested. Yeah, go on Thrinder. They have apps for that. That's what kills me. It's like, why are you bothering people who have not explicitly said that they want this thing? There's literally apps for this. Like, go on Thrinder, find Thrinder. I think it's Thrinder. And the three three Tinder. Three Tinder. Okay, okay. For, okay yeah. Thrinder. Whatever. They have apps for that. I thought Thrinder was one, or maybe I made it up in my head. <laughs> I hope it is. <laughs> I hope it is, too. If it's not, I'm starting it. <laughs> Thrinder, the app for third wheels. <laughs> okay, so what should I pick my nose with? My pinky, index, or thumb? Which fits the best? Some people have big fingers and little I nostrils. I think it depends what you're doing. Because, like, if you're, like, fingering somebody, then naturally you have... Didn't they say to pick their nose? Yeah, but if they're like, if one hand is like, you know, busy, if their hand that you use, like, oh, oh, pick your nose oh. is like busy, then it's like, okay, then which of these is like most comfortable on my hand that's remaining? You know, there's like different things. Yeah. Like if you're holding something in your hand, you're going to have to just use your thumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you have to pick your nose a as a secondary. Exactly. Situa there's a yeah. situation for everything. Multitasking. Yes. Um, I'm not built for work. How can I make money? Marry someone with it. <laughs> or I think um, become really charming and convince people to give it to you. True. Um, you could scam, scam, play, um, <laughs> or you could also do like one of those like what is clinical trials? Yes. They're always looking for people with clinical trials. You're not working. You're just you know being injected with stuff. Yes, you're just you're being monitored. Yes, you're a lab rat. Go be your lab rat. You'll yeah. make some money. You got this. I believe in you. Um, I keep taking people to court. How do I learn to live with injustice? Personally, I think you should keep taking people to court. Okay? We need more people like if you. If you got the money. Exactly. And the time, like, keep doing it. Like, why should you learn to live with injustice? Wow. Quite frankly. How much, in, what is the injustice happening? Does it matter? I guess not. I love, I love this energy. I don't think you should lose it. Personally, keep taking them to court. Because, like... People need to learn that there are consequences to their actions. Sure. So keep at it. Personally, just keep fighting. <laughs> I'm really shy Aww. talking to girls, and that's standing in the way of my lesbianism. Aww. What do I do? I think this is going to be like genuine. This is the last question we have okay, here. Okay, perfect. I think that what's important is if you're a shy person, 
is to have a conversation piece about you. What do you mean? Like have something that makes people want to talk to you, comment you, compliment you. And that usually opens up the gateway. Oh, like a really cool sweater. Really cool sweater. Really nice hat. True. A re- you know, like something. A hat people will hat, say hat something to you. Hat sticks out for sure. I used to wear a face gem on my face. Not that I'm shy. I just did it for attention. <laughs> <No>. but like, <laughs> the, opposite. the opposite. I did it for the opposite reason the, of being shy. But yeah, people were always just like, oh, what's that on your face? And I'm like, did you I? wouldn't understand. <laughs> oh, no, you were rude about it. Oh, absolutely. Well, maybe don't be rude about absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. Definitely be nice about it, but... Yeah. yeah. I think maybe this is a situation where a dating app can be very helpful because you can meet them, talk to them in the comfort of your home. Maybe even disclose, like, I... But just to warn you, I'm shy, so if I'm awkward, like, say how you feel. That's probably not what you should tell yeah, a shy person. Yeah, I'm shy about. in your bio. <laughs> I'm shy. But you can say, like, yeah, a little awkward, but big heart. Or, hell, write a little name tag that says, I'm shy, and go to the fucking bar. Honestly, so many people will talk to yeah. you. Um, and it's not embarrassing. It's just really honest. You just write, I'm really honest, and I'm really shy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the name tag's getting long, but you get the idea. Exactly. Just, you have to put yourself out there to reap the rewards. In some small way. There's ways you can do it more comfortable, like through a dating app where you can text, blah, 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 first, get to know each other. But at some point, you will have to do the excruciating part of being seen. If you, what, what was that, that um, article? It was like, if you want the rewards of being loved, yeah. you must, you know, face the reality of being known. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. So. <laughs> All right. Well. Yeah. Thank you for sending in your questions. Welcome to the judgment portion of the Geniverse, where we're not going to lie about it. We're here to judge you. We're here to tell you if your situation, you, your opinion is valid or not valid. I guess let's just dive in. Let's dive right in. Okay. So this first person says, I'm not inviting my mom to my wedding. Valid. I think that's valid. Valid. You know, some people have awful parents. Some people, parents just also just have bad vibes. <laughs> Honestly, it's your wedding. Also, weddings are so made up. They are. You can do whatever you want because, especially American weddings, they're barely even based in tradition. They're based in whatever, whatever. So you might as do whatever, whatever. Next one. The only thing holding me back from trying to get back with a guy is losing my friend's respect. Am I valid? Absolutely not valid. Not valid. Not valid at all. Like, you would lose your respect for a good reason. Because your friends are, like, looking out for your... Looking out for your interests. And that should matter to you. Like, you should see respect yourself enough. Unless your friends are, like, the most picky people in the world. And they're like, you can't be with this man but because... All the all of your friends yeah, feel that exactly. same way. Yeah. I don't understand, like, one or two bitches. But if all yeah. of them are, like... Given the information we've been... We have here before us, not valid. Not valid. You, you need to respect yourself more. You probably shouldn't be with this guy. And there's a bunch of guys. There's a bunch of guys. All right, next one. Am I valid for breaking off a friendship because they don't ask me any questions? Yeah. Yeah, valid. Valid. <laughs> if that's something you need to feel loved, move along. Someone will ask you a question about yourself. Exactly. It's so weird to not ask questions of people. Like, Yeah, no, so you're valid. valid. Those people aren't worth your time. Okay, am I valid if I broke up with a partner because they were addicted to swing dancing? Really? Not valid, and I hit my mic. Let them have a weird hobby. Are you perfect? Do you have no strange hobbies that no one could ever judge? Was this a perfectly good human being? I, no, not valid. I don't Let know. people be strange. I think, I think you, you're valid because any interest can be toxic if the person okay. engages with they it. They didn't say it was toxic, though. It doesn't matter, but they probably have their reasons why. They said addicted to string, swing dancing, meaning they're not doing swing dancing Personally. a regular amount. <laughs> they are probably only trying to I swing would love dance. to be tossed around like a rag doll. <laughs> You're inserting a lot of your opinion in this. You're not being this a very... This is about my opinion. Oh, this okay. is valid, okay. valid. Okay. We're here to judge I think, with I our I personally opinions. think you're valid because... Honestly, any hobby can be quite too much. It does not matter how innocuous it is. The court is torn and we're just going to have to live that way. Okay. Agree to disagree. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Okay, so am I valid if I'm still not over my ex? We broke up six years ago. Valid. You can be I'm so (laughs) sorry, 
But six years? <laughs> six years? Some of us have a lot of feelings. Six years and you haven't done the work necessary to move on? Some of us have a lot of feelings. And that's the fact. Just because you have feelings does not make them valid. I think you are absolutely not valid. You need to do the work. Because six years, you're letting somebody live live in your 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 house i don't think it's your healthy head, rent free i don't think it's healthy but i can see how it could happen i agree to disagree on that one yeah i don't think you're valid okay so this one am i valid for not saying bless you because people haven't died from sneezing since the black plague i think you're not valid well i think I like think it, i think it's like certain things are a cultural norm out of just like courtesy it's just like decorum okay and Fine. it's like not that, valid yeah it's like why you're being too technical like obviously we're we don't say blush it's more of an acknowledgement of another person it's like those little pops and moments that's like i see that you're suffering and i'm empathizing with you that's what a bless you sort of is it's like a polite it's a polite gesture i was on the fence but i see your point of view not valid not valid for the same reasons thank you i love that <laughs> <laughs> my opinions can be changed I love that about you. <laughs> yeah. I'm a wall and you're like <laughs> yeah. the wind. <laughs> I am I am the current or not the current, the the waves the crashing waves. on the beach. <laughs> and I am the rocks. <laughs> on the will beach. I can be eroded away. But, but it's gonna take a but long time. But it's gonna take a long time. time. Um, okay, so am I valid if I don't accept my friend's other friend because the other friend faked cancer 14 years ago? Wait, what? Are they valid because they don't accept their friend's other friend because the other friend faked cancer 14, 14 years ago? 14 years. So they don't accept them because 14 years ago they faked cancer. I'm going to say valid because I, you don't have to accept everybody. I don't think you're valid because like, okay, 14 years ago, just from like your profile picture, this person was like a, a child? child. Okay, if That's they were I'm a saying. child. Like, it, it just seems like this person was like a child. Maybe they were going through so much stress at Children fake illnesses and like fake if this conditions. Was a child, if this was a child, not, not valid. valid. But if this was an adult, yeah. I still even have some room for that because some people are delusional. I don't and know. like sometimes well, yeah, you some know, people some people want attention and like they might have been going through a bad mental health. And it's fourteen years ago. It. I think what matters most is have they like acknowledged it? Yes. And have, have they, they like done the work to like not with, have know, it happen not again. have it happen again and were they like accepting people's money and sympathy oh yeah that's yeah, a big thing if they were accepting people's yeah. money money is really i need more details here. obviously yeah. we need more details but personally i don't if think it was a valid. child get over it i'm just guessing they were probably a young child or just a naive adult um okay next one i don't give christmas gifts but i happily accept them am i valid <gasps> really I think, like, it's okay to skip it, like, one year every now and then or whatever. Like, not everyone can participate in Christmas gift exchange every year. Is this person year. a child? Or is no, this a no, grown? This is, this is a grown person. But I feel like if this is a habit of yours where, like, especially if you have, like, one person who particularly always gives yeah. you and you never return. Then it's like, not valid. Yeah, because, like, some people's love language is gift giving. And, like, even if it's not yours, you know that that's how they like to receive love. So, like, you know, just every now and then reciprocating it. If you aren't going to go out of your way to tell people, like, I don't do gifts, mm -hmm. but you know, and you're doing that knowing they're going to give you a gift, not valid. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so next one. Um, am I valid if I broke up with with two year, my boyfriend of two years cause, because he didn't bring me as a wedding guest nor introduce me to those friends? I think you're valid. I think you're valid because what is he hiding? Also, like, a boyfriend of two years doesn't take you as a wedding guest. If, unless this wedding was, like, bare bones, like, family only, nobody could have a plus one. Yeah, if he couldn't get the plus one, that's not his Yeah, fault. but if he had a plus one and he still chose not to bring you, nor to meet those friends, what do those friends know that he doesn't want you to know? I don't like that. I don't like that. You're valid. You're valid. I would be so suspicious. Okay, so am I valid if... I cheated on my boyfriend with another woman in his bed while Wait, he was what? on a I business trip. I cheated on my boyfriend with, with another, another woman. woman in his bed while he was on a business trip, but I broke up with him afterwards. Not valid. Not valid. You cheated on him. If you had to type out, I cheated, I cheated on, on him. him. How can you in do his that? bed? Like, <laughs> break up with him before? It sounds like you just wanted to brag about the fact that he cheated yeah, on your boyfriend. Yeah, you're getting laid. Congrats. Congrats. But this, no, come it's on. It's not valid. Not valid. Just Absolutely not no. valid. No. Move along. I can't even. If you had to type out, 
<laughs> they're little bums. I cheated, cheated on my boyfriend. I cheated. It should have just stopped there. You cheated. Not valid. No. No. All right. Well, that's, that's the last that's one. A, yeah. yeah. I guess any cheaters are not valid. Court is in session. Court is dismissed. Oh. It's over. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a beautiful segment. Yes. Here in the Jenniverse. Our last real segment of the episode. And we are here to the segment called Controversial Opinions. <laughs> <laughs> now, moving forward, there will be ways to submit your questions, your mm -hmm. opinions, your secrets, whatever we may ask of you. And usually we would go over maybe some other people's controversial opinions, but today is the first episode. Yes. And today we will honor only our controversial opinions. <laughs> Would you like me to start or would you like to start? You can start. Okay. So here is my controversial opinion, which I've talked about publicly before, but I must get on the record as my first number one controversial opinion, which is you should not smell your food before you eat it. You're going to miss out on a lot of good taste because things that smell bad taste good and you don't want to get it mixed up. You don't want to hang on to the smell. If you think it's rotten, smell it, if you want. <laughs> Sometimes I just gamble. But if you know it is good, put it in your mouth. Grow up. If it tastes bad, you can live through it. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, my God. We should change the segment from controversial <laughs> opinions to straight up bad opinions. Because that's, that's what that was. If you're eating a new food, do you smell it before you eat it? Absolutely. And has I that ever still, stopped you? No, it has never stopped me. Okay. But it helps to contextualize the smell. Like sometimes like something would just taste sweet or sickeningly sweet. And the smell enhances what that sweet is supposed to be. I think I have to say that I know for a fact my taste buds are dull. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out in college. When I started drinking lots of alcohol, everybody could taste the alcohol before That's me. That's what you should preface with. Um, my but, taste buds but I'm are saying, dull. my way of life is more enjoyable. I just dive headfirst into everything. I'll just taste it. And I think if more people just taste stuff, some stuff smells bad. And that taste is good. I think the smell is part of the tasting experience. And I think you're cutting out a very integral part. Smell it of... after you eat it. No! <laughs> <laughs> eat it, take a bite, and even smell it while you're I can't, chewing I it. I absolutely cannot even taste without smelling something. Like, I'm, in, I'm smelling as it's on the the spoon going into my mouth. You know what? That is my controversial opinion. And unfortunately, at this moment in time, it cannot be changed. That's fine. And I, you know what? I'm sorry. I <laughs> should not have attacked you so viciously. No, you can't. I just feel so strongly. I think strongly. that's what this segment is about. Okay. You can attack Absolutely. me. Absolutely. So my own controversial opinion is that um, everyone should just lie more. <laughs> like, I think lies are not as big of a deal as people make it out to be. Personally, as someone who celebrates their birthday multiple times a year <laughs> on my Instagram, <laughs> a lie like that is so inconsequential and hilarious to me and to the people who notice that like, I think we need more lies like that in the world. I don't know. For me, I think lying is a neutral act. Too many people use lying for evil, obviously, but there are also those of us who use lying simply as a means of entertainment where there's no victim. Like a victimless lie can just exist. And sometimes this world is more magical and mystical with a few lies sprinkled through. I think if you're a sad person, try throwing in a few ridiculous lies into your lives. You, you <laughs> would be surprised how much it enhances your entire experience of life. I think more people would be a little happier if they threw in a little inconsequential lie here and there. I'm gonna start with my rebuttal with I support you. I've seen her lie quite often and it hasn't hurt anyone on a, a too badly. I would say gullible people like myself, I would consider myself gullible. It does hurt me a little bit to know that people are taking advantage of my stupidity, but not enough that you need to stop. Also, for me, I can't remember the lies I'm telling. And that's stopping me from lying. Mm. You know, I think if I had a better memory, maybe I would play this game more. But as a person who can't remember, I would suggest not lying. 
Because they will catch up with you quickly. Well, I think that's the thing about lying is that it, it sort of helps you build your own world, your own memory skills in a way. <laughs> like, yes, there, there are two High types, of, there are two types of people who like to lie. There are people who lie and they don't keep up with their lies. And this person is just known as a fragrant liar. But then <laughs> there's there are liars who generally do keep track of like what it is that they're lying about. And it, it, the thing is, it doesn't matter who you're lying to, so long as you can remember what it is you're lying about and also it being inconsequential. Like if I'm lying every year, I celebrate my birthday on September 12th. That is just like the day after 9-11. It makes it makes any lore that I have with 9-11 seem personal because it's like, yeah. oh, I hate 9-11 because, well, because people died, but also because it overshadowed my subsequent birthday. So my real birthday is not September 12th, um, but no. that lie is constant enough that there are people who are like, I thought you were a Virgo every time I celebrate my birthday randomly. Oh, people say it. Yeah, there are Virgo. people who like keep up with that specific Now, lie. although I'm not agreeing with all of this, I will go back to my <laughs> first statement, which is I support you. And since I support you, I'm going to ask you the question, what is the best situation to lie in? I think the best situation to lie in is when you first meet someone, because that's the highest degree of trust you're going to ever get from that person. So Seriously, if like, you're a liar. No, in general. Like, because when you first meet somebody, they have to trust you to provide all the basic yeah. information about themselves. Name. Name, where you're from. What you do. Siblings, what you do, what you don't like to do, random opinions that you have. And you'll never get that, like, level of trust, even if you become their friend. It would It's like, it's exponential. Like, too it much starts for up, you to lie. Exactly. So... Right then and there, if it's someone that you generally know you will never see again, most likely. Go for it. Go for it. Be a different person. Try out a new life. See, like, that kind of, okay. See, yeah. My like, opinions will change <laughs> yeah, a lot, quite often. So that seems fun. Yeah. Like on a vacation. Yeah, on a vacay. I yeah. might try that. Yeah. Be a different person. You know, it's like escapism, but like uh, non-consequential. Obviously, don't say you're like, or a surgeon and somebody's yeah, like having yeah, a medical yeah. emergency and they come to you. And then you, you cut into them? No, you don't lie about big things. Like, the most you'll say is like, I worked at the front desk of, an, of a hospital, but never say you're the doctor. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not even a nurse. Not even a nurse. Just, you, you took calls. But like, I was a librarian for nine years. That's actually a serious thing to lie about. You think? Yeah, I think so. That's pretty consequential. You think? What if a child, like, hears that, comes up to you, and asks you, because librarians have a lot of random knowledge. So you're a librarian, but you're not able to answer this <laughs> See, child's this is why I can't questions. even get into it, because I don't know the <laughs> rules. You can't even pick the right thing to lie about. I can't remember it. <laughs> I need to come out with a book that's like, the rules of non-consequential lying, and that's... lay it out for people. Because A guide. It's a guide because I genuinely th think it's an art form. It's a subculture and it can be done so beautifully. Coming from a 36-year-old Virgo. <laughs> What's your cat's name? My cat's name is Peter. See, another, That's good a great thing because Peter is a real borrow. cat. We, you I borrow know, from we know the Peter truth. The cat. That's the thing about lying. You have to borrow from the truth. Okay, well, as we said, you can send in your own controversial opinions. Maybe we'll talk about it. But mostly we ask that you, that you please, please, please consider both of ours. Maybe lie. Maybe don't smell your food before you yeah, eat it. Yeah, Jill's might be good advice for picky eaters out there. Or that for all eaters. I think picky eaters specifically would And yours might be more. good advice for people who can remember things. Or people who want to work on their memory skills. It makes <laughs> the little high stake moments for you to remember. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Well, okay. that's enough of that. Well, we've made it to the end of our beautiful first <laughs> tour into the Geniverse. We hope you enjoyed your stay. Feel free to follow us on socials, on Instagram at the underscore Geniverse, or you can follow me at park underscore slope underscore arsonist and you will see Geniverse content on both of our pages and on our stories you can answer to prompts here's the thing you should just follow Anna because I'm not sure I want a lot you of can also follow Jill me. because I'll be tagging her on my post <laughs> but I will not name drop her page yeah because I don't want too many people there it's mostly for me to be hot and I don't know if it's for the world. I think the world needs to see you. The world can see it, but if you want to participate in Geniverse things, follow the Geniverse Instagram, follow Anna's Instagram. Yeah. Follow the Geniverse, the underscore Geniverse. But yes, yeah, send us your secrets, your questions, the things you need advice on, your controversial opinions. 
And you're valid or not valid. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But thank you. Yes, thank you for tuning in. We will be doing this again next week. So, so we'll see you again next see week. See you again. Damn.